Dear colleagues, welcome to a very special IDKD refresher series in the area of GU diseases, and I will focus on imaging of the prostate. My name is uh, Bernd Hamm, and I'm from the Charité University Hospital in Berlin, and especially as a former president of the ESR and ECR, I'm very sorry that we could not have met in person at this year's ECR and possibly also next year. However, let's be optimistic and hope for better times and that we can meet again in person in Vienna or at one of the ADKD courses. So how is prostate cancer diagnosed? It is first a simple blood test to get a check of the PSA. However, early detection of prostate cancer by PSA screening is controversial, and these are the controversies, overdiagnosis, underdiagnosis, misdiagnosis, wrong risk assessment, overtreatment and undertreatment. Yes, we can say this is a real yin and yang story. So what can we add with multiparametric MRI? So we can have a differentiation between the low-grade prostate cancer, which just sits in the prostate, doesn't cause any harm to the patient. However, we are able to detect the aggressive tumor, hopefully before the tumor is jumping out of the box, out of the prostate, and causing distant metastases. And diffusion-weighted imaging is very helpful in this task. Let's have a look to this histologic specimen. This is a prostate cancer, Cleason 3, low grade, and Cleason 4, higher grade. And when I'm asking you in which area of the prostate the diffusion is more restricted, everybody would say it is more restricted in the more aggressive tumor part. So let us have a check. These are two patients, patient A and patient B, 65 years old and an elevated PSA. Multiparametric MI to check or to rule out prostate cancer. In patient A, we see one lesion in the peripheral zone and some linear wedge shape changes in the peripheral zone on the right-hand side. Looks like chronic prostatitis on the right-hand side. Patient B has a focal lesion in the peripheral zone and another even bigger lesion on the right-hand side. Now, let us add the diffusion-weighted imaging, the ADC, and the high B value 1,400. Yes, this lesion has some diffusion restriction on ADC and IB value, and this lesion has an even more diffusion restriction, as you can see here, the so-called black and white pattern. So my question to you is, which might be the most aggressive lesion in these two patients? Patient A on the right-hand side or left-hand side, or patient B on the right-hand side or left-hand side, and I'm pretty sure you already made the correct diagnosis. So let's have a look to the results. And in patient A, this was a low-grade prostate cancer, Gleason 3 plus 3, and this was chronic prostatitis. In patient B, this is a highly aggressive tumor, Gleason 4 plus 5, and this was no cancer. So multiparameter MRI helps us to detect the most significant, clinical significant, prostate cancer. And yes, as it is, has been published in this paper, in more than 1,200 prostate foci in 588 patients, most of the lesions are not seen by MRI, 52%. However, with MRI, we usually detect the larger cancers, larger than one centimeter, and which is even more important, we usually detect the aggressive prostate cancers with parts of Gleason 4. So now let's have a look to two interesting cases. The first one is a patient 72 years old with serological suspicion of prostate cancer because of the PSA. The PSA is continuously increasing. Digital rectal examination is negative. And this patient had already three systematic trust guided biopsy, which were all negative. The last biopsy was one year ago. So let's have a look to the T2 weighted sequence. I will enlarge it a little bit. Now we go from the bladder down to the prostate. So we see the BPH of the transitional zone. And then we see the peripheral zone with some signal inhomogeneities, linear, wedge-shaped, 
But I'm not very scared about these areas because the virologist was already with his needle in these areas. So what might be with this? That's a little bit difficult to make the decision. And now let's compare this image with the diffusion weighted image. And here you see a significant diffusion restriction. Let's have a look again through so the whole prostate. No diffusion restriction in other areas, but a significant diffusion restriction of this lesion. And if you like to have a look to the ADC, I can show you it as well. Significant diffusion restriction. So finally, this lesion was biopsied and it was a Gleason 3 plus 4 prostate cancer. Very difficult for systematic biopsy because location is in the ventral part of the prostate. The other case um, is a very interesting case and um, it is 302. Let us have a look. Here it is 302. This is a patient 69 year old with suspicions of prostate cancer because of the PSA. The digital examination is negative and he does not have a biopsy before. Now let's have a look again to the T2 weighted sequence. Here we have the prostate with some changes similar to chronic prostatitis and no other lesion. Now let's have a look to the diffusion weighted imaging in parallel. Oh, there is a focal area with some diffusion restriction which might refer to this area on the T2-weighted sequence. Diffusion restriction, maybe focal lesion on T2-weighted imaging. So therefore we gave this lesion in the apex of the prostate a Pirates 4, small lesion in the peripheral zone. And now let's have a look to the histologic result. Very surprising. This patient had a Cleason 3 plus 3 in all 12 needle biopsies all over the prostate. So all these areas contain prostate cancer, low-grade Cleason 3 plus 3, which indicates that we will miss the low-grade prostate cancers. However, in this patient, it's significant because it's everywhere on both sides, but if we see a Oh, if we don't detect a small low-grade prostate cancer, this is not a real problem. We should be able to detect the clinical significant prostate cancer. And with this, I would like to sum up with the question if we should perform MRI before the first biopsy, the so-called MR first approach. And in the meantime, there have been some milestones publication in Lancet, New England Journal, and European Neurology. And if you allow me to summarize the results from these papers, we can say that multiparametric MRI reduces the number of men who need a biopsy, reduces the diagnosis of insignificant cancers, improves the detection of clinical significant prostate cancer, especially in patients who had a negative biopsy before and still suspicious of prostate cancer, and it improves the risk stratification in patients who had a diagnosed prostate cancer. This is good news for multiparametric MRI. However, as radiologists, we should work to improve our image quality. Let's have a look to this case, a three test MR in a patient with suspicious of prostate cancer. And the question is, is this a lesion or not? And when you look to the diffusion weighted imaging, these are really disappointing and not helpful. The same patient with adequate image quality, there will be a straightforward diagnosis, focal lesion on T2, black and white pattern on diffusion weighted imaging. This is a Pirates 4, highly suspicious cancer of the prostate. So with this, I'd like to thank you for your attention and please stay safe and stay tuned with the IDKD. Thank you.